energy sources. Tidal barrage. Geothermal energy. Natural gas. Tidal barrages have power generating equipment such as turbines or push plates that are mounted on gearboxes and moved by underwater currents. Their gearboxes then converts mechanical energy into electrical energy and sends the energy back to the shore through electrical cables. This is how energy is generated from tidal barrages. Tidal barrages relate to some global environmental issues. In places where tidal barrages are built, the environment is negatively affected. This source of energy causes severe changes in tidal movements, which causes destruction to the environment. Even though this is a great type of energy source, it brings negative effects on environmental issues all over the world. Tidal barrages have positive effects, but have some negative effects as well. The positive effects include the fact that tidal barrages are predictable since tides come in and go out every 12 hours. It is also non-polluting, which positively affects the environment. Lastly, tidal barrages are a renewable type of energy source, so as long as tides are available, tidal barrages will be able to produce energy. Tidal barrages also have some negative effects. These barrages are not a cheap source of energy, which means that it will be hard to build barrages and it will take long. Tidal barrages also have some effects on climate change. The environment affects climate change, and even though tidal barrages have positive effects on the environment, it brings negative effects to climate change. Rising and descending sea levels can affect average and extreme events such as droughts and drainage patterns. Tidal barrages also relate to economic and environmental factors. It relates to economic factors because tidal barrages are expensive, therefore hard to make. It also relates to some environmental factors because tidal barrages bring both positive and negative effects on the environment, which were mentioned before. Geothermal energy comes from the core of the earth. This energy is carried to the surface by superheated water and steam. We can recover this heat and use it to heat buildings or generate back electricity. Factories which collect geothermal energy are called geothermal power plants. In power plants, cold water is pumped into the ground and boiled. When the water rises back to the surface, the heat is collected and converted to electricity or heat. The cost of operating one power plant is limited to day-to-day -day operations and labor. However, no fuel is needed to generate electricity or energy through geothermal energy, making it cheap. But it might still be a risk because the expense of constructing a geothermal energy station is not cheap. Geothermal energy stations may cost more than $10.5 million depending on its size. One of the biggest power plants in the world is located in northeast of Tapo, costing about $430 million to construct the facility. However, looking at the long terms of the savings they'll make, the method is sufficient and a great success. Su Another positive effect is that most geothermal facilities operate virtually emission-free, which means that they don't create pollution. Some even reduce sulfur emissions that would have occurred from natural venting if these sites had been left untapped. Therefore, we could consider that geothermal energy has only positive effects. Scientists have hypothesized that fossil fuel is to run out in around 20 years. Someday, geothermal energy will become our main re energy resource. Governments will need to invest money into constructing more of these power plants in order to prepare for the future when fuel runs out. Natural gas is considered as a new type of resource that is often described as the cleanest fossil fuel. Natural gas is mainly of methane, typically with 0 to 20 percent or higher hydrocarbons, which is primarily made up of ethane. Natural gas is related to crude oil and is found underground. Although there are several ways that meth methane and thus natural gas may be formed, it is usually found underneath the surface. The positive effects of the natural gas are that it burns cleaner than oil and coal and produces less greenhouse gases. Also nowadays, pollution and lack of resources are being a big global issue, but natural gas will decrease the pollution and will conserve more energy.
This is the typical composition of natural gas. However, there are also some negative effects of the natural gas. The biggest problem is that even though natural gas burns clean, it contributes to global warming. It is said that the natural gas contributes to the global warming because it generates CO2 when it is burning. Not only that, it is said that the natural gas is about 20 times more powerful and harmful. Also, the cost of the natural gas is getting more and more expensive and the demand for the natural gases are increasing as well. So the natural gas has had an impact economically, environmentally, and socially. Now, some interesting facts about natural gas. To make LNG liquefied natural gas, gas needs to be cooled down to about minus 260 Fahrenheit. Also, an LNG tanker which carried LNG so far has never exploded, proving that LNG is a very safe type of energy. Now moving on to tidal energy. Tidal energy is also one of the oldest type of energies that has ever been created, dating back to 787 AD. Also, this type of energy is qualified by UN to be one of the most sustainable energy technologies we have today. Tidal energy is so efficient that it converts 80% of the potential energy of water to electricity that we use today. Lastly, geothermal energy. Sadly, geothermal energy supplies less than 10% of the world's electricity. And also, geothermal energy requires relatively small space, so it has less impact on the environment. Geothermal energy is especially effective in volcanically active places like the picture. Natural. There are similarities and differences in the three types of energies that we discussed today and the similarities that we have in all these three are that they are all are alternative types of energy and they all are environmentally friendly. The differences that these energies have are that they are produced differently and that's the last thing I'm going to This is the similarities and differences. Thank you!